everybody, and welcome to your balloon yeast fermentation lab. I'm so excited to get started on it, as I'm sure you are, but first, we need our PPE, our personal protective equipment. So I'm going to go put mine on, you put yours on. We'll meet back here, same bat time, same bat channel. Okay, much better. So anyway, in today's lab, we're going to be illustrating how yeast do their respiration, called yeast fermentation. And some of you may be a little familiar with this, for example, if you like to brew beer. But what is going on at the chemical level? What are the yeast actually doing? So if you don't know, yeast are alive. They are of the members of the kingdom fungi. So they're fungi. They're fun guys. Ha! Anyway, what they're going to do is they like a, an energy source. For example, glucose, C6H12O6, which is a very important molecule. It's the same one that our cells like to take up so that they can produce energy in the form of ATP. Well, just like us, yeast like to break down that glucose by breaking the bonds and rearranging the components into other molecules. So for yeast, the reactants of the reaction are going to be is the glucose, C6H12O6, and they're going to break the bonds of the glucose and produce as products carbon dioxide and ethanol, alcohol, right? So if you're brewing beer, then you, of course, are going to be interested in getting that alcohol out of there. And, of course, the little bubbles that come up in the beer have carbon dioxide. It's a waste product of the yeast respiration. Well, if you are baking something like bread, you're going to be more interested in the carbon dioxide because that's going to be what makes that dough rise. So we're going to illustrate this concept and try to figure out, can yeast use sugar substitutes as energy sources to produce um, the products of yeast fermentation? Or are they very strict and only want sugar? Because, of course, table sugar is sucrose. And sucrose is a disaccharide. It's made up of the monosaccharides glucose and fructose. So we know, because if you've ever done any baking with yeast, you know that yeast like to break down sugar. But what about sugar substitutes? Splenda equal, which is aspartame, or sweet and low, which is saccharin. Could any of these also serve the same purpose as sugar? In other words, can you use a sugar substitute in your baking with yeast and have it produce the same result? We're going to try it. So we're going to work with four different treatments. So you're going to need some long-necked bottles, um, beer bottles or old-fashioned soda bottles. These happen to be beer bottles. And ideally, you want all four of them to be the same so that we're controlling for bottle type here. So I got my four long-necked beer bottles here. Of course, they're clean and empty. Don't worry, I put the beer down the sink. I didn't drink it. Anyway, um, so what we're going to do is one treatment is going to have table sugar. The other treatment is going to have whatever sugar substitute we decide. And um, just for giggles here, I think I'm going to use equal just because this stuff is probably not something you want to put in your body, but we're going to see if the yeast like it. And uh, we're also going to look at salt. Can regular old table salt, sodium chloride, be used as a as an energy source for the yeast? And water will be our control. So we're going to put yeast, our particular substance, sugar or sugar substitute, salt or water, into here. All these will get a hundred milliliters of water and a balloon on top. And we're going to see what happens to that balloon. But as you're doing the experiment, think about what's going on at the chemical level, how the yeast are breaking down the energy source to produce ATP and spitting out carbon dioxide and ethanol at the end. Now, why are we caring about yeast fermentation? Well, yeast by themselves are really interesting, and yeast fermentation is very interesting, and of course it has wonderful applications to the real world. But um, this is also to get you thinking about what mammals like us do for our cellular respiration. So we have, can undergo two kinds of respiration, anaerobic, which does not need oxygen, or aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration produces the most energy in the form of ATP, and that happens in the mitochondria inside our cells. But we can also do um, quick energy, where we don't get as much energy, but we can get it quick, and that happens outside of the mitochondria in the cytoplasm of our cells, and that's called glycolysis. So in some ways, glycolysis and yeast fermentation share some similarities. But let's see what happens. So let's go ahead and get started. And what we're going to need to do is measure out four sets of seven grams of dry active yeast. So you can buy this, of course, in the grocery store. 
probably used it before to make bread and things like that. Um, and just like we've done before, you're going to need your digital scale and a weigh boat. And you're going to put the empty weigh boat on the scale, tear it, and weigh out seven grams four different times um, into your weigh boat and four different times of yeast. So I've already done the first one. So here's 7.0 grams of yeast, and I'm just going to go ahead and if you kind of bend your weigh boat, you can easily pour it in there. So I'm going to pour 7 grams of yeast into the first bottle. Okay, now you're going to want to do that three more times. So each one of these packets says that it's 7 grams, but that's not always very accurate. So you do want to actually weigh it out into your weigh boats um, on the scale. So go ahead, do Maybe use all three packets, but weigh out three sets of seven grams of yeast, and one set goes into each bottle. So by the end of that step, every bottle should have seven grams of yeast. So I'm going to do that, you do that, and I will be right back. Okay, so I don't know if you guys finished yours, but I now have exactly 7.0 grams of yeast in each one of my four long neck bottles here. Uh, now we're going to add the... Um, substances that we're going to be testing. So sugar, sugar substitutes, salt, and then um, later on we'll add plain water to all of these. But So the control will get nothing added, just the water. But the others will get water plus their substance, sugar, sugar substitute, or salt. So uh, we're going to need um, exactly 4.0 grams of each one of our substances into the respective bottles. But first we need to label our bottles. So you always want to label everything when you're doing a science experiment. Um, for example, in a hospital setting, when people don't label things correctly, bad stuff can happen, right? So we want to make sure we label these. So I'm going to go grab um, a permanent marker, and you do the same, and let's go ahead and label our bottles. Okay, and now I have my bottles labeled. I just made little paper jackets for them. So I got my sugar, which is sucrose, glucose plus fructose. I have my sugar substitute bottle, which will be for my equal, which is aspartame. You might use... Again, you could use Sweet and Low, you could use Splenda, you could use Stevia, whatever you're interested in using. Um, my bottle that's going to be for the salt, and then the control, which will have nothing but water and yeast in it. So what I need to do now is measure out 4 grams of my sugar, 4 grams of my sugar substitute, and 4 grams of my salt, and add them to their respective bottles. Um, make sure that you are using a clean weigh boat each time. You don't want to crisscross uh, sugar and sugar substitute and salt because then you won't know whether your results are due to what they're what what you think they're due to versus being contaminated with something else so make sure you're dealing with clean stuff every time um, I'm going to go ahead and using proper weighing techniques weigh out my sugar I'm going to add it to the sugar bottle weigh out my sugar substitute add it to its bottle and weigh out my salt add it to that this bottle and when, after I've done that I will be right back see you in a minute okay here goes four grams of sugar into the sugar bottle. Bzzz. Try to be careful not to let it spill. There we go. Okay. There we go. Four grams of sugar into the sugar bottle. Okay. Four grams of equal into the sugar substitute bottle. Four grams of salt into the salt bottle. Okay, so now I have my four grams of sugar in the sugar bottle, four grams of equal in the sugar substitute bottle, four grams of salt into the salt bottle. I didn't add anything extra besides the yeast so far to the control bottle. So now each bottle has seven grams of yeast and four grams of their respective thing that they have, except for the control, which just has yeast. Now we're going to add 100 milliliters of tap water to each one of these bottles because you have to have water to aid the yeast in breaking down the... the energy source. So um, for this, you're going to need your 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. That's the big one. 100 milliliters. Um, and then I have a container of water here. I'm just going to pour 100 mils, measure it. Don't forget that when you're measuring something with a graduated cylinder, you want to look at the bottom of the meniscus, the curve. Okay, so I'm going to add 100 here. I'm going to add 100 here, 100 here, 100 here. So let me see if I can do the first one. You might want to use a funnel for this just to eliminate some of the mess. And I got a little bit over, so I'm going to get it just right. All right, that's 100 milliliters exactly. Let's see if you guys can see that. Oops. 
Okay, so just take my word for it. It's 100 mils exactly, so I'm going to add that quickly. And you want to work quickly between each of the bottles so that one doesn't start reacting before you get to the rest of them. So just quickly, actually, I'm going to add the control first. I'm going to add my 100 mils to the control. Okay, and now I'm going to quickly repeat this with the other one. So I'm going to pause it, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've added 100 milliliters to each of these four bottles. Now it's really important that, that we swirl these well because if you don't swirl them, the yeast won't have full contact with the sugar substitute in the water. So we want to swirl them really good. Um, and it's all in the wrist. So I'm going to demo how to swirl it, but wear your goggles. And let's take the first one. So you want to swirl. Don't knock over the other bottles. Let's see if we can get this in the mirror. Swirl. Just swirl it for about 30 seconds. Treat all your treatments exactly the same. Okay. So I'm going to keep doing this with all the four treatments. You do that too, and we'll come back after we have all of our bottles swirled. Okay, I have all my bottles nice and swirled. And by the way, that technique of swirling like this is uh, the same technique for swirling that you would do with a, an early Meyer flask, a glass flask if you were in a lab. So you're getting kind of that experience without spending all the money for a flask, which can be quite expensive. Okay, so now we have some good yeast fermentation going on. We are going to determine how much yeast fermentation is going on by putting a balloon over the neck of each one of these. And so what do you think is going to happen to this balloon if yeast fermentation is occurring? Ah, and why? That's the question. So you want to kind of be careful. You want to kind of stretch your balloon. Make sure you have a big balloon that has a big enough lip on it. And you just want to make sure you kind of pull it a little ways down and give it a tug so that the balloon itself is right in the middle of the hole of the bottle. So if you guys can see that, but you want to pull it down pretty good. Otherwise, you may end up with an enormous mess on your hands. So you want it to be at least that far down on the neck, okay? And work quickly. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the other ones. I, I chose four different colors of balloons just to help me keep track of which bottle is which. Sometimes your gloves can get stuck in this stuff. Just make sure it's over the center. And I'm going to use another color. I'm going to pick blue. You can pick whatever color you want. And I'm going to put this over this one. And finally, taking another color. I'm going to put this one over this one. Okay. Now you want to start the clock. This is time zero. You want to record onto your paper your initial observations. So in my case, my initial observations is that all four bottles, the balloon is flaccid, nothing going on, right? And then just start the clock. Make sure you have your cell phone or, or something nearby where you can start, um, start your observations. Um, and every five minutes, just record what's going on, what you see happening with the balloon in each of your treatments. Okay, and then you're just going to keep doing that until you get to 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, write your last observations, take a picture and stop the clock and then be sure to let us know what happened on the discussion board. So post your picture on the discussion board as well as your handout. Tell me what, if the balloons blow up, what was inside of the balloons and why? Okay, hope you enjoy, have fun, make sure you have some paper towels or baby wipes around because this lab can get a little messy. See you soon.